Command Point now has merch. Link in the description. Hey guys, it's Ryan from Command Point. Before we get into today's episode, I just want to go ahead and talk about a Kickstarter project that is close to Shane and I called Objective Control Tabletop Game Aids. This is a project that is being run by uh, two local members of the Rochester Wargaming community, Ryan and Chris. They have developed game aids made out of a signature polymer blend material that is scratch resistant, flexible, and reduces the visibility of fingerprints and smudges. The project includes objective markers that are sized for both games of Warhammer 40k and Kill Team, as well as other good game aids such as deployment zone markers, area terrain markers, measurement tools, and condition markers. They have given me a set of these already, and I can tell you that the quality is unmatched by any other third-party objective marker that you can find today. I prefer these to those mouse pad matte style objective markers uh, simply because they don't lead to any cocked dice on the table. At the time of recording, there are 18 days left in the project, so it will expire on Sunday, October 1st, so make sure to go back this project before then. Go ahead and check those out. I will leave the link down below in the description. Thank you guys, and let's get into today's episode. Hello, everybody, and welcome back to Command Point. My name's Ryan. Today, I'm here with Shane. Hi. And uh, today, we're going to be talking about uh, Shane's trip down to the, I think it's the Nova Open, right? That's the that's the actual title of it. It's not just Nova. Uh, yeah, it's Nova Open. Yeah, yeah, the Nova Open Kill Team Tournament, um, where you wound up finishing second place. Yeah. So, Crazy. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, you're you're tearing it up this year. Trying my best. Yeah. Trying my best. It was uh it was a fun tournament. Honestly, the whole like so this was my first Nova. Um and as you know, and like it really is like a cool thing. Like the whole like I got there on I just want to say first, like I got there on Thursday night and there's like this big area next to like so there's this huge room where the 40k tournament was and like on the outskirts of that big room, kind of like on a little tiny balcony up like three stairs, like so looking down, that's where the, the kill team was like on the outside. Uh -huh. And it was a really cool like venue, first of all. But like uh, connected to that room was like this room with a bunch of tables everywhere. And like there was like, you know, drink areas set up and you could just like chill and play board games there at night. And they mm -hmm. had all these board games. There's all these people just playing all sorts of games. It's so, like I got there on Thursday night and I played like uh, Crokinole. Um, I oh my God. Crokinole. No, yeah. I haven't. But I remember Moist Critical's video of like him doing commentary over like the Crokinole World Championships or whatever from like years ago. Oh my God. It's yeah. Crokinole's sick, dude. Crokinole is pretty sick. I'm, I'm, um, I can't take you seriously right now, man. <laughs> Crokinole's with that of, video in my head i've never seen that video but crokinole sick. oh i'll send it to people you dude should play. yeah no <laughs> it it, it looks fun <laughs> um no and then uh i got to play like you know it was just cool seeing all these people playing all these different games and like the 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 painting displays and everything were just amazing and yeah the whole like nova is just an experience and it's cool and, and people should do it if this if they're into this hobby I would really recommend anybody to go to Nova. Yeah, I have to go next year. For Absolutely. Sure. Yeah. We, we gotta we gotta make it work. Yeah. We gotta go to I have to go to like more national level events. Yeah. yeah. I mean I, I haven't in general been to that many. Outside of like KTO, I don't think I've been to Yeah, I haven't been to a, like a I guess a big like national level event for Kill Team. Yeah, it was yeah, I mean it was the biggest event I've been to in terms of like in general. 
Yeah. Um, but for Kill Team, yeah, a little smaller than uh, KTO, but still one of the bigger events in the country this year. Yeah. Um, and just like the scope of it, like right when you walk in the room where the like GTs were happening, there's like this gigantic Terminator. The Terminator. Statue. Yeah. Yeah. It was so huge. And I'm pretty sure it's like life size. It's like to, to scale. It should be. I think it's, I think it's like night. Was it like nine or 10 feet tall? Oh, I feel like it was bigger than that. Even it was huge. Yeah. But, um, no, it was cool. Like, and there's like GW guys walking around, like people that I've seen on like GW streams. And like, <laughs> it was just cool. Yeah. You know? Um, interesting, interesting weekend. Very cool. Uh, and the kill team tournament was a blast. Well, awesome. I'm glad you had a good time. And, uh, you met up with a bunch of the other, I guess, like usual, like friends through kill team that we have uh nick craven was there adrian was there um gosh who yeah, else was everybody there everybody in the east coast with the garrett's were there so i got picked garrett's up were there by, i just want to say the the first shout out i want to give about the whole nova trip um is mark garrett uh absolute sweetheart he picked me up from the airport mm-hmm. gave me a little like scenic route on the way to the hotel and he was like full tour guide mode like he just he's from dc and he just knows all the things oh okay and was like telling me all this stuff and he drove me back to the airport on monday and picked me up a little early so we could do like a proper like drive around dc Mm -hmm. and i got to see like the white house and like all the stuff nice monument and like the yeah it was surreal it's a cool city like like yeah. Even like architecturally, it's a nice looking city. It's one of the nicer ones in the East Coast. It, it's def- it definitely is. Yeah. Um, yeah. I mean, that just all comes out to, you know, the city planning and all that. I I went to DC, I think it may have been like five years or so ago, but mm-hmm. um, may have been even been longer than that. But um, I got a. <laughs> I don't I don't know if I should say this on the podcast. I got kind of a me and my family uh one of the security guards in the Capitol building. We were trying to find the quickest way out. And okay. he and he's like I'm not going to say his name or like what he looks like cuz I don't <laughs> want to get him in trouble. But um he's like, "Yeah, no, I I know the quickest way out." And so we walk past like a sign that says like it says like staff or like some, or like, no, it, we we hopped into an elevator that said like it said like Congress people only, like you have to be like a a congressman or a representative or like a member of their staff or something. Oh, all right. Sorry, I, I actually something happened and I couldn't hear you. Oh, okay. After you said I don't want to say his name or what he looks like. Oh, that was that must have been the FBI agent entering the <laughs> uh, the Discord call. That's so weird. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh. We go in, we go into the elevator that's marked like Congress people only, and then we uh-huh. and then we go up, and when we get out, we're like on basically the it's like the second tier of the Capitol building that like people are only ever on whenever like the president is getting sworn in. Okay. So like we're on the steps, and you can look out. And in every single direction from the Capitol building, you can see like all of the main avenues that lead out like into DC basically. And they all terminate kind of at and around like the Capitol building and like the mall and everything. Uh-huh. So yeah. So DC is a super cool place. Shouts out to that security guard. Uh, you know who you what are. are. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Total bro. Yeah. Yeah. The, I mean, DC is like actually the only, it was like the final northeast american city like of note that i hadn't been to before whoa so i was well really I get, yeah outside of like the south yeah like northeast yeah, yeah. outside of the i guess canada uh just counting american places mm-hmm. um but yeah no it was great it was a really good time and the convention was awesome so yeah so um let's get down to brass tacks here and talk a little bit about uh your tournament run basically so i don't really want to get too deep in the weeds with the games that you played um leading up to i guess like qualifying for top eight um yeah there's like a couple things i did want to talk about just um yeah go ahead in terms of day one so first of all the as far as the 
teams I've played against. So I'm playing, I played Legionaries for those that are uh, not aware. Yeah, actually. Um, yeah. <laughs> Sorry, I, I this, my... this is one of my questions, Shane, uh, now that yeah. you bring up Legionaries. Uh, why did you decide to um, play Legionaries at Nova? Like, did you just want to take them because, you know, they're the faction that you're most familiar with? Or did you want to take them because you think they play, played well into the meta? What did, why did yeah. you take them? So it's kind of like a, it was a perfect storm because for one, like you mentioned, I'm the most familiar with them and I didn't have to learn a new team. Uh, two, I think they're very good in the meta right now. I think all the most popular teams are really scared of us, which is uh, Intercession and Commandos. Uh, I don't necessarily think Commandos should be that scared of us. Like I think we're probably their worst matchup, but it's still like pretty close to even, I would say. Okay. Um, and on top of that, selfishly, I noticed on the ITC rankings for the factions uh, that if I just played one more tournament with Legionaries, I would pretty much be a lock for the number one Legionary player in the world, um, even if I was to go like 0-7 at Nova or something. Oh, that's um, crazy. <laughs> so yeah, so I'm so after Nova, spoiler, I am now the top Legionary player, and it's actually a pretty nice margin. So I think I could just, if I wanted to, I could just stop playing them, and I'd probably be safe. Yeah, so you're the top Legionary player worldwide by a very wide margin, and then what is the other accolade that you were telling me about? Oh yeah, I'm I'm now the top ten on ITC. I cracked it. Number I'm, one, uh, baby. No, oh, no, number nine. <laughs> oh, number nine. Yeah, but I am the highest ranked American player on ITC, so there you go. Yes, that that's what I was referring to. Which is a cool uh, thing to say. Which, I, I mean, if look, if we're going by, like, NBA and NFL and uh, MLB standards, you know, if you're number one in the U.S., that means you're number one in the world, right? You're the world champion. <laughs> that means there's, yeah, there's no other places, right? I mean, not So here's really. the thing, though, because, like, <laughs> with the NBA, like, you have Toronto Raptors, right? So that's, whenever, yeah, that's yeah so that's the world. MLB, same thing. There's Canadian teams. Yeah. Yeah. And there's players from other countries in, uh, playing in all of those leagues, so. Yeah. Yeah. Um, number one in the and, world. And there was, there was, you know, there was some European people, spoiler, that played in Nova. Mm -hmm. So, hey, there you go. Yeah. Um, but no, yeah, it's pretty cool, actually. It's crazy. Um, yeah. Between, yeah, uh, it was, I think I was like in the 50s or something. But yeah, this is the first time, uh, first year I've actually gotten to play enough events where it was even remotely possible. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it was after KTO. You kind of just like buckled down and played all these tournaments out. So yeah, um, so yeah, that was uh, Legionaries. So sorry, I interrupted you. Yeah, uh, Legionaries was uh, it was just like kind of perfect. Like I I felt there. I think they're really great in the meta right now. Um, the tournament was half into the dark, so I knew I felt pretty confident that any game I played on into the dark against just about any team and any player I felt I could win. And uh, I didn't lose on Into the Dark the tournament, and I played like five of my eight games on it, so I was correct on that. Um, and as far as Open goes, I've practiced a lot on Open. Um, it's not as... I'm not as confident there, but I still felt pretty good for the most part. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. So, um, outside of... I guess let's keep it outside of um, your your top eight games um, and and the finals. Um, what was the most difficult game game? I guess of your um, of your qualifying run. Oh, that's a tough call because I played. There were two games in particular on day one that were just like really difficult. So I'll, I'll talk briefly about both of them. So All right. first and the second round, and this is becoming a very common thing for me. I played uh, our good friend, Nick Craven. Yeah. Um, this is the third tournament I've gone to with Nick Craven, and this is the third tournament I have played against Nick Craven. Um, and he was playing Blooded, so we got to do the Blooded Legionary rematch from KTO. Yes. Um, the last time we played, I tied with him, and uh, we sat down at the table, and I made a prequel meme. I told him that my powers have doubled since the last time we met. And, uh, That's a good one. He said... And then he did the Dooku line. What was it? Uh, twice the pride, double the fall. <laughs> yeah. 
he said that. <laughs> <laughs> um, oh, and that's awesome. <laughs> we we played a so there's a play in this game that I I need to talk about because it's it might be my favorite play of the entire tournament, and it might have won me the game against Nick. So I did win this game. Um, and it was mostly I'd say strategically. Uh, it was very tight game. Uh, he played really well, as he always does. He's a phenomenal player. Um, it, it was one of the first games I've ever played against Blooded where it felt like they were actually rolling four ups. <laughs> Every time I against Blooded, they just always hit everything and I die. and It's sad. But um, he was not making his four ups very frequently uh, on some of the crucial moments, mm. I'd say, with his with his big guns, which was making my life a little bit easier. But there was one moment on one side of the board, and this was on Into the Dark, again, um, where he has his commissar with the power fist standing in an open doorway in front of my uh, Reaper chain cannon, who is holding down a flank by himself on an objective. And it, like any activation now, the commissar can charge with Relentless and, and potentially just kill my chain cannon. It was mm -hmm. a very dangerous situation for him to be in. Um, and I'm like, I need to kill this guy now or else I'm going to lose this whole side of the board. And so I walk up. I say, I'm going to shoot the commissar with my Reaper chain cannon. And he says, I'm going to pay one CP for the like save your protocols thing because he had his medic sitting right next to the guy. Uh... And I'm like, oh, God. And then I'm thinking about it, and I'm like, okay, wait a minute. I have fusillade. No. And I we have to look up the rule for fusillade because it is actually it is different from blast. So with blast, if you shoot a guy with a blast weapon, you can have the savior protocols basically make it so that the other guy just gets shot twice rather than the other guy getting shot, the, the main target getting shot at all, and then you know. But with fusillade. The target is selected, and then after the target is selected, you can choose to allocate the dice any way you want to between that target and oh. somebody within two. So the new target is now the medic within two inches of the commissar. So I say, I'm going to put one shot into the medic, and I'm going to put the other five into your commissar. Oh. And I, and I kill the commissar. Dude, that's so good. And I think that won me the game, possibly. Yeah, that's, that's such a that's good play. Because like you said, if you it. didn't kill that thing, then it would have gotten the chain gunner, right? Yeah, he was probably going to kill my chain gunner. Um, so Fusillade, guys, that is it. That is the moment when he used Fusillade. I, I guess so. Um, insane. Uh, but yeah, that's that was like the main thing in that game. It was a lot of like two-for-ones that I set up. Um, he just couldn't quite kill my my beefier guys fast enough. Um, and uh, the game ended up going pretty well. So I won that. I was 2 0, and then I played Crute, and it was on Into the Dark, so that was like a really difficult game for Crute, and I won that. Um, shout out to Chris O'Hare. He's my opponent, really nice guy. Mm -hmm. uh, and then on the fourth round, I look at the pairings, and I am paired against uh, John Reese of um, Can You Roll a Crit fame, the, the, other YouTube person <laughs> that <laughs> plays Kill Team uh, that isn't Glass Half Dead. Um, so he flew over from the UK to participate in Nova because, uh, well, he won Nova last year. He flew over and won Nova last year. Yeah, he's got to come defend the title. Yeah, and I had never really, I'd never spoken to John before. I we hadn't. I mean, I think we'd like interacted briefly on Discord uh, a few times before, but like that was like it. And so we sit down at the table and he's playing commandos and we're on open board. And this is my first open board game of the day because I had gotten lucky enough to end up on Into the Dark first three games. And I'm, I'll am i be honest, I'm a little afraid because it's, I think commandos on open is like one of the scarier things at this event. Yeah. And we can talk about this more later, but the maps we're using, it was the map pack by Turning Point Tactics. And their maps are, I, I would say they're just generally quite good. Um, mm -hmm. The thing about them, though, is there is a lot of cover, um, like they put a lot of heavy cover in the middle of the board, like uh, on like towards the center of the board, which I think is generally speaking a good thing to do. 
Yeah, because you want a you want a cover that you can hug as you move up the board. You want like melee is, teams to actually be able to play the game. Yeah, exactly. The problem with this, and this is not a terrain problem in my opinion. This is a commandos problem. Is that commandos with sneaky get can just be really really abusive on these setups because they there's a lot of spots where they can put their models forward. And John against me, he used sneaky get three times. So he forward deployed. He spent all of his CP in the pregame to forward deploy. Oh, uh, I believe it was the sniper, the dynamite, and maybe the rocket or the slasher. And there was immediately so much pressure. Yeah, on... I'll be honest, Shane. I didn't even know that you could do that. Yeah, you can do it three times because uh, you have three CP. <laughs> so there's nothing stopping you from doing it more other than the amount of CP you have. Um, and uh, I'll be honest, I don't think you should be allowed to do it more than once. I think that is yeah. a good thing to look at. That's what I'm saying. Days, but, <laughs> um, but I think a lot of people are starting to come around to that now. Uh, but anyway, so he does it three times. And I just, there, there's no way I'm going to score more than two points on primary on turn one. It's just not possible. Um, so I go two, I go down two to four on primary turn one. He's taking infiltrate and he's getting gather surveillance. And he, and he has seized defenses. So he ends up getting a couple attack ops and on the first two turns. And on turn two, he also is up four to two on primary. I just can't quite break through. So like, I'm losing like 11 to six after round two. And important thing to note is at the top of round two, I won initiative. Uh-huh. And I had my aspiring champion overcharge a plasma pistol into his breacher. And, and sorry, breacher. We don't want to get confused here. Whoa. <laughs> there are no Navis <laughs> breachers. Um, and it was Breach of Boy. Uh, so this is four shots hitting on twos, AP2. And I rolled a four and three ones. And mm. I have three CP. And one by one, I spend all of my CP re-rolling. Oh. Because it's just, I can't have this happen. Yeah. And I re-roll, two of those three re-roll back into ones. That's just how it is. So, yeah, so on seven dice, I rolled five, five ones. Yeah, on an overcharged plasma pistol. And he fails his one save, and he uses just a scratch to live. So I then have to charge that guy after I just took six mortal wounds and um, punch him to death with a power fist. And with that in the board state, I'm thinking at this point, I might be just done. Like, I might yeah. be screwed. Um, but uh, over rounds three and four, I was just able to, like, move up trade like pick off orcs survive like clapbacks and not give him anything like super good to hit me back with um and on turn three i went up four two on primary just by moving up the board and on turn four i went up four one and i was able to get eliminate guards i think twice i got route i got robin no i got eliminate guards once route once and robin ransack maxed out and um i had two more points than him on primary and or one more point than him on primary and one more point than him on tac ops because he just couldn't get the infiltrates other than implant um and uh i so i was up two points at the end and i the other nice thing was i had i had him beat on like every single tiebreaker because we weren't doing ties on nova so in the event that we had tied i would have been been safe still um, and so that, that game and the game against Nick were both extremely hard. I would lean towards the commandos game being the hardest on day one. Um, but that was crazy just cause I had to like come back and it was like a really uncomfortable, like yeah. word for me comparatively. I think. Yeah. From the jump. Yeah. And I will say, um, my game with John was like super cordial. Like we, there like we had like zero disagreements the entire game which in like a super sweaty top table game like that was is a rare i think <laughs> like we played a very clean game and we played quick and we were like totally in understanding of what the other person was doing at all times and it was a really fun game um and yeah so that was that was a fun one nice yeah i'm happy to hear that um Let's see. 
So um, let's go ahead now, and obviously you progress through the rest of the day. Um, you wind up making top eight. Um, so going into day two, uh, what was the uh, who was your first opponent on day two? Yeah, so they did it like a bracket. So I was f- number one on day one, so they put me against number eight on day one. Gotcha. So it was like one versus eight, two versus seven, so on. And the eighth place seed for uh, from day one was um, it was this guy named Dawson, who is from the uh, Miami scene actually. So he knows like Ben from Battle Brothers Tabletop. Mm-hmm. I think he goes to his tournaments and stuff. And he came in with a group of people that are first of all shout out to all these guys because they uh, they're subscribers. So you guys rock. Um, but they were yeah, all super nice you. people. Um, and Dawson was playing Commandos, so this was my second Commandos game in a row. Um, and we played on Into the Dark in the first round. The second round was all open, but the first round was Into the Dark on day two. And we played a really tight game, and it was not easy. It was a very difficult match, despite being on Into the Dark. Um, I was honestly surprised by how hard he made it for me. I was able to take over the left side of the board like really convincingly. Um, and I think he was like, he didn't, he eventually got over and like kind of pushed me back, but he did it, I think, a little too late. He kind of got that done with on like turn four instead of turn three. Um, but on the right side of the board, he had so many threats lined up that I couldn't even really like do a ton with my anointed. My anointed like whiffed like every feel no pain. It was crazy. Um, and, and he died pretty quick. Uh, but he also took uh, infiltration, so he had like uh, gather surveillance. I don't remember what other ones he had. Implant, probably, maybe. Um, I found that implant wasn't like players were maxing it against me, but it didn't feel particularly good because like I would always be really happy that they weren't taking more wounds off of my models, and it was like allowing me to continue trading pretty well and. Like ultimately, like if if like nine out of your eleven models are dead at the end of the game, it's you're not going to win. Um, I don't know if he took implant, but in the games I played against implant, I I found that not too bad. Um, but yeah, I ended up taking that one. That was a that was a really fun game. Shout out to Dawson; he's a good player. Great. So, um, what was so? I'm sorry. How many games total did you play day two? So it was three rounds, but four games because the finals was like a you played one game after another and then like added up the scores basically. Is how that worked. Gotcha. All right. So who was your next opponent then on that day? So my next opponent, and I was really excited about this one, was actually Liam Garrett. Oh, Um, okay. This is the first time I've gotten to play any of the Garrett family. Who I really wanted to play them for a long time. They're excellent players, all of them. Um, and, uh, Liam had qualified for top pod and Leander, I believe was in second pod. He like barely missed out, um, but they were both playing commandos. So there's more commandos to play. Uh, and we ended up on open board on loot, which I think was like the, in my brain was the scariest possible matchup, um, against commandos. And he, so the difference in this game, he only did one sneaky get. I thought he was going to do more, especially on loot. And I, my entire deployment and setup was to try and make sure that if I went first, I would get to get three loot points, like guaranteed. Um, because then the only advantage that commandos can really get on you, typically in the legionary matchup, is they can just get a points lead on you and just try to hold on to it. Yeah. And if they don't get that points lead, then I think it's like they kind of start to panic. And it's like, I need to kill these models then because I'm not winning on points. And they really just can't kill you most of the time. Mm-hmm. They don't have enough things that that do it. Um, so I went up 3-3 on loot. And I went up. I went even 3-3 on loot. But it felt like going up. Um, and on turn two, I just kind of started doing the thing. Like I, I tried to, in all my games against commando players, I would try to bait out a turn one dynamite or like squig shot. Okay. If I could, unless it was like something like really bad, mm-hmm. because I would want them to shoot me on turn one instead of on turn two when they have DACA up. Um, okay. 
and Liam didn't bite on this. He waited until turn two to do it, which was a bummer. And uh, on turn two, he got the squig up. He did like no damage to my one guy, but he like straight up killed my Shrive Talon. So, and I think that was, in hindsight, that was probably like the last good thing that happened for him in that game. It was like, I kind of just like charged and killed things and I would set up like two for ones. Um, and I was able to have my bail fire, charge a guy, fight a guy and kill him and then like shoot and kill his dynamite guy before he even got to shot. And like against legionaries, like the, the only real things they have that can kill me is like dynamite and squig. And like if the rocket's getting relentless shots that can kill me, Mm -hmm. maybe. Um, but so like when those guys are dying and the, the rocket died turn two as well, like he got forward deployed and at the end of turn one, he jumped down, used infiltrate to get a shot on somebody. So since he moved, he didn't have relentless and he literally like did no damage at all to my shrive Talon. Um, and then on turn two, I just killed the rocket. The squig blew up, got a guy, but then it was gone. And then I was able to kill the dynamite. And I think I killed his knob as well with my anointed at some point. Or no, with my spiring champion charged um, his Daka boy, punched him to death with a fist, and then plasma pistol the knob to death. Mm. Um, so like between all that, he had lost like most of his team at, and by the end of turn two, we kind of he wanted to just talk it out, um, and we we were able to finish up quick. Liam was a really good player, and he was a really good opponent. Um, I liked how he played. He was like very clear with intent, um, and it was like discussing everything we did. It was. It was like very refreshing and he's a great player. Um, and although the game went like pretty heavily in my favor, I don't think that's necessarily reflective of, of his skill as a player because he's, he's quite good. He actually had, uh, he had played John Reese in the top eight and, and beaten him in the commando mirror. So yeah, he, uh, he had a good tournament for sure. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Wound up finishing fifth overall. So, um, uh, your next opponent on the day, yeah, so the finals. Um, I played against Adrian Bonavento, who is uh, from Brooklyn, so another New York fella. And uh, we had actually played in Syracuse at Salt City GT. And uh, I, it was Legionary versus um, Commandos there, and I, I had taken the win there. So we were kind of getting this rematch, um, which, was, which was pretty cool. So... He had taken, uh, I'm sorry, so obviously he was still commandos here and I was still legionary here. But like I said earlier, the finals was like a strange, I, it's the only tournament that I've seen do this before. And it was like, it was two games. It wasn't just one game. It was two games. The One was into the dark and one was open. So that way you would play both formats. Gotcha. Um, and you would like add up the points of the games, I suppose. Yeah. So if you yeah. look at like the, if you look at the standings on PCP for the event, you'll see the final game. The scores are look uh, violently inflated. <laughs> um. Well, one of them does. Sorry, Shane. Um. <laughs> hey man, a twenty-two point <laughs> loss doesn't look that bad. <laughs> Without context. Yeah. 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 Um, but yeah, so to my knowledge, I don't think any other tournament has like done something like this, um, where it's like so, two rounds into the dark and open to determine the winner. Yeah. So like I have thoughts on this. So first of all, um, I think Matt did a great job running the tournament. I just want to put that out there first. Mm-hmm. I don't want this to sound like I'm complaining. Um, but I think my take on this. So first of all, the we only had three hours to play both games. Oh, what? So yeah, we we had a very small time frame to actually get these games started. So Adrian and I like actively tried to start early. Um, we started like maybe like 10, 15 minutes early, but like we're we were rushing pretty hard to get through these games. Yeah. Um, and I I'm I know that affected how he played. I know how it affected how I played. I think like we both had really sloppy moments across both of these games because we had to play, we had to set up, play a whole game on Into the Dark, move all our stuff over to the open board, set up, play another game on open board. Um, and it was like really stressful. Um, so the other thing on day one, 
uh, the main tiebreaker for standings was strength of schedule. Um, and a lot of people didn't like this. I didn't personally mind it because, you know, when you have a cut, like a top eight cut like this, you know, it sucks to like lose to a really good player because you got paired up against somebody, you know, and like somebody that's really good. And that's like your one loss, right? And your score gets really suppressed and you get like eight points or something. Right. But then you win all your other games. And but because you played the one really good player who like crushed you and you didn't score a lot of points, you can't make top eight. So like I get that. And I was fine with it personally. I you know, I think that Yeah, strength every... of schedule I think is kind of like like every tournament that I run, like strength of schedule in terms of like tiebreakers, it goes it goes point scored, and then this isn't just for kill team. This is for like all sorts of miniatures games. Yeah, and then I usually just like default to strength of schedule because that just makes the most sense to me. Yeah, I especially like strength of schedule in a big tournament where there's a lot of players and a lot of games getting played. Right. Um. And so, but what this meant was we didn't have to worry about points ever. Like victory point scored, we didn't have to like worry about scoring a ton of points, you know, we're like trying to like just crush our opponent or like suppress their points or anything like that. So like we played the whole tournament, not caring about points, but in the finals, you need to care about points. You know what I mean? Because it's two games and you're like adding up your scores. Like you're not just playing yeah. to just win. Like you, you, there's like these alternative. <laughs> it, it runs counter to basically the primary method of, determining rankings in the tournament determining standings up until that last until the last game basically yeah and um the other thing i would say is i personally like so like the the way that i would remedy that is i would say i would prefer a best of one or a best of three over a best of two because then you can just worry about winning a hundred percent yeah uh, and I think that's like the most important thing <laughs> personally, especially because in the context that points never mattered, but you know, it's whatever. I mean, the points aren't really what, I mean, I guess the points are kind of what hurt me, but uh, I don't know. It's so we play two games and the, the one thing I did really like about it was you, so we, we played on instant arc first, but we would roll off and the winner of the roll off would pick one of the three missions and like veto it. I like love loot that. Capture secure. Yeah. So I won the thing both games and I vetoed loot and then Adrian picked capture in both games. So in both games we played on capture, which I, I was actually surprised. I thought he would pick secure. I was really happy with capture just because the anointed can just like, yeah, he doesn't, be, you can just yeah. turn into demon and it doesn't even matter. Yeah. So I don't know if, I don't know, maybe he was just personally more comfortable in capture, and that's why he went with it, but it obviously went fine for him. But we play the first game on Into the Dark, and it's uh, the first mission, I forget what it's called. It's like Conduit or something. Um, But it's the one where all of the objectives, that you have one on your side, and then they're all like lined up in the middle, like straight across, um, which is... uh, probably the worst one i could have gotten as far as instant arc goes because he just uses shush and his entire team dashes up to the doors in front of like all four objectives and he's got enough guys on engage where i can't go into any of the rooms really yeah without like risking one of my guys getting killed so straight away i'm kind of terrified and i i literally i had to go down four to one on primary ace. Yeah. Which was kind of gross, especially because we're playing in a format where, you know, the points matter. Um, I expect to have to like work my way up a little bit, but on most of the other into the dark boards, you can reliably go to like go three, three. Mm -hmm. Um, And it, it was just kind of unfortunate that we landed on the one board where I kind of have to go down four, one. Um, And I think on the turn two, we went Three three and on turn three it went four two and on turn four it went four one for me, but like the tack ops weren't great for either of us. I think I won like fifteen to thirteen, like barely. Okay, um, yeah. So it was a win on game one, uh, but not a huge points win. Yeah, and then on game two, 
so I have a lot of thoughts on game two <laughs> and I don't want it to sound like sour grapes because Adrian played amazing and he did everything that he was supposed to do. And I, it's not blaming Matt because, or the turning point tactics, because um, I found out in retrospect where we, we go down to the table for the open board game and it's, uh, I forget which layout it is, but there's like two objectives that are kind of up a little bit that are like closer to your side. And then there's two, they're, they're more central and there's two that are right on the middle, but they're on the outside flanks. And then there's two, you know, mirroring more central on their side. Okay. Um, and we roll attack or defender. It's where we're like super rushing. Cause we're trying to get the second game out in three yeah. hours. And I have not played a game all tournament or seen a open board all tournament where the attacker defender, like the deployment zones were ever really lopsided in any way. Mm -hmm. Um, And so I went attacker defender and I take attacker and I'm just, I take a glance at the board at a glance. Oh, it looks somewhat fine. And I'm like, whatever, let's just pick attacker. Um, You know, I'm on half melted brain, eight games in onto the technically 10 games in onto the weekend, including team tournament. Yeah. Um, and, you know, we, we pick our teams and we go into barricades and we're setting up barricades. And it's at this moment when I'm like looking at the actual board, like more closely. And it's like, holy crap, what did I do? Um, and, you know, I'm looking at, so it's, you have a Octarius building like in front of your deployment zone. Yeah. And so do they. And on the midline, on the left, there's the oil rig. And on the middle, there's another uh, Octarius building. And on the right side, but closer, well closer to, like, so, I'd say like two or three inches closer to his side is the other Octarius building. Um, oh, okay. Yeah. And I'm looking at it and I'm thinking, like, I wonder if this got knocked. Like, I wonder if this is even meant to be like this, but it, we're in such a it, rush. It, I don't it probably like, did. Call, yeah. I don't want to call Matt over and like yeah. ask him. And Matt and I looked at it after on the turning point tactics, like actual layout. And it was like so far away from where it was supposed to be. Oh no. So, um, we deploy and, you know, again, it's my own fault. I picked the wrong deployment by a mile. Oh, I didn't pick the deploy. I should have picked the other deployment and, and moved. Yeah. But he deploys triple sneaky get, so the oil rig on the left, he puts a snipe up there yeah. and it's pointing right down. So like I have the one piece of heavy cover um, and there's like a light barricade on the left side of my deployment right in front of that oil rig. So I just can't deploy there. It's just not an option. Mm-hmm. Um, he puts, he sneaky gets his rocket up onto that right um, vantage point and conceal. Um, and he four deploys a slasher boy on the, under the right building against the door. And I'm like measuring out. So I have to deploy my whole team behind the, the heavy cover. I put one guy in the light cover because I'm thinking, oh, maybe I can, you know, run up and grab that left objective. But like the way he deploys, it's like if I do that, it's kind of like suicide. So I uh, I know he's going to go infiltrate on scouting because they're always going to do that so they can shoot their rocket. So I'm attacker. So I take infiltrate. Um, I win. I, I, I choose to go first. Go there. Otherwise, my plasma is going to get shot. And I just move him up onto the heavy cover, onto one of my safe objectives. And this is the other thing. My safe objectives, one of them is completely out in the open. With There's that like no cover point. at yeah, all. Yeah, with the eye at all. And the rocket on the, the sneaky get it up is pointed right at it. And so I had to put a barricade there, which isn't even going to stop me. It's from not even shot. Yeah, it's just going to give you a. Yeah. An auto the save. other safe. Yeah, the other safe objective is I need to go all the way up and press against like the corner of the building just to be on it and heavy cover. Um, and his objectives on his side, this, the, the mirrored ones, are both in heavy cover, like f- like firmly. Gotcha. So this was like a colossal screw up in the attacker defender choice. Um, and like, and not only that, but I'm like measuring. So from the heavy cover that I deployed on, the left middle objective, nine inches, I can't even get there. It's too far away. Mm-hmm. And there's not really even like terrain that I can like hide on the way there, like realistically. Mm-hmm. And the building on the right, because it's been pushed back more than it should, nine inches, it can get me in cover, but I'm not like 
pressed against the wall at all. I'm like almost a full inch back. So like any angle, like, you know, from the left, um, I could potentially get shot if he moves up enough, like with a comms or something. Right. And the, the rocket can easily just walk down and shoot me, but I just have to accept that. Like that's unavoidable. Um, and, but, to, but moving my guys up onto that right side, they're in range of the bomb squig from his deployment with a comms and the breacha from his deployment with a comms. Um, so I can't really like stand on that objective. I throw guys there just to force him to do something. Yeah. Um, he still gets the objective from me. Uh, I threw like one guy there just to force him to put two guys on it. Uh huh. And I have to, I literally just to that objective that's out in the open with the barricade. The only guy that's going to eat that, I have my anointed go demon mode and stand on the point. And he eats a rocket shot to the face and he takes like five damage. And then on turn two, Adrian wins initiative and shoots again, relentless rocket and kills the anointed. Yeah. Um, and like, yeah, I, and then I like charge a guy with my malefic blade gunner and I roll like one hit and like four misses. And I spend like three CP just to get like three hits or two hits or something. Mm. And I still can't kill the guy. And I, um, and I think I have another moment with my plasma where my plasma just like super whiffs again, like kind of like in the game against John. Um, and I just can't get to any objectives. I don't have anywhere I can hide. And I got completely blown off the table. Uh, like, I think I literally scored three points this entire game. I think I got three primary and no tag ops. Um, and I basically got tabled, I think. We might have called it when I had one guy left, but it was like the most unwinnable board I think I could have ended up on. Gotcha. And it's unfortunate that I got knocked. I thought about asking Matt and I should have. But he was just like running around so busy on day two and like we're in like super rush mode. Right. And, you know, I just wanted to move on. And by the time I realized it was too late. Yeah. Um, and I think if I had taken that other side, um, I may have won. Uh, honestly, all my games against commandos were going like progressively better. Mm -hmm. And I was like understanding the matchup a lot more as we went on. But. On that setup, I really couldn't do anything. Um, and it it's kind of a testament to just how strong the sneaky get stuff is because Commandos players will tell you, all the Commandos players I played told me that they felt like Legionary was their worst matchup, like Nurgle Legionary. And if that's true, I mean, that game was not close. <laughs> you know? Yeah. Like, that that was just a complete stomp. So right. the points were just so lopsided, it didn't matter the first game. So even though I won one, he won one. He ends up getting first because he has uh, he has more victory points. So he gets first, and I get second, and was definitely a bummer. But you know, Adrian played really well. Not to take anything away from him, he did everything he was supposed to do. And if it wasn't uh, a great player in that position, they would not have been able to to punish me in that spot the way that he did. So um, huge props to him. Yeah. Um. So. I have a couple thoughts as well on the, um, I guess, the two-game playoff for the finals. I, I do like the idea of it, you know, because it's like you have to be a complete kill team. You have to be a complete good kill team player. You have to make it to the finals, and then you also have to score enough points, not even necessarily win, I guess. Um, you got to win at least one, I would imagine. Yeah, um, yeah, you can't possibly lose two. Yeah. Um, so I like the idea because you have to play one game on Into the Dark, one game on Open. Some players out there who are good players almost exclusively play just one or two, just one or the other. Yeah. Um, I know for a while there, like I was almost strictly playing Into the Dark just because at that time that was my preferred way to play. Um, it felt mm -hmm. like it feels like the games are a lot cleaner to me on Into the Dark. That's probably just my personal preference. Um, yeah, I mean, I I get what you mean. Like, you can't really get like there's not like there's not like three dimensions to it. You know, it's yeah. like rooms, hallways, doors. There's no vantage points going on or anything like that. So the train can't get knocked. You know, on Into the Dark, it's yes. always going to be static. Yep. Um, so it feels like a more competitive environment, I guess, to play a game in. Um, uh, so I, I like the idea that you have to be a complete well-rounded player in order to win. Um, 
That being said, playing two games inside of the span of three hours, uh, even asking that of even top players, I think is uh, asking far too much. Um, especially with a game uh, w- with the stakes involved, right? Yeah. Because it's not just a game in a tournament. It's not just two games in a tournament that you have to play within three hours. It's it's for the tournament. It's for the it's yeah. for first place. You know. So my recommendation would either be to you got to have you know at least four hours. You know, two hours for each game. I would say. I almost want to say two and a half. Um, it should say like two I, and a half. I would think. What is like the? What was the standard time for no, the rounds at this tournament? Like hour and a half, hour forty five. Like oh, I think okay. Three, Maybe I'm asking for too much then. Yeah, I think like three and a half hours would have been perfect. Like, and it's especially yeah. like it didn't end up affecting us, but like the idea that it could affect somebody because you know you're worried about points and you're playing on such a tight frame that like somebody could get timed out on the second game when they're behind on points, like. And it might right. be like round two or three, and maybe they would have come back, but like because the game got called early, the maybe the points can screw somebody. So that's why I would prefer if it was a best of three and we just had like two more hours or something, or like just a best of one, like any other tournament. Yeah, um, given but, you know, given the, the time constraint, that... I would I would say it should have just been a best of one. Um, yeah, I, and a lot now, of people in in the you... other pods. Uh-huh. I was going to say sorry. A lot of people in the other pods actually opted to just play one game. Um, oh, I didn't okay. even know that was an option. <laughs> yeah, I totally would have rather done that. Obviously, I won the first game, so I'm biased. But like, I think even going in, I would have rather have just played one game. Yeah, me too. Like, I don't care if I think I'm gonna win or lose. Like in a two game series, you tell me I have three hours to play two full games of Kill Team, I and I have the option to just play one. I'm gonna pick one every time. It now yeah. the the other option I think you mentioned earlier, that being hypothetically like a best of three series, um, I would say you need to do that. Like, you can only do that if it's a three day tournament with like day one qualifying, day two top eight, and then day three finals. Yeah, I think. Yeah, probably. Yeah, like like, I just I think in theory it's it's just a cleaner way to do it because then you don't have to worry about points. Yes. Um, I think my ultimate preference is just one game. Me I too. totally get how Me it's too. a pain in the butt for like, you know, some teams are better on into dark or open. I think a good way to do it actually th- that I would like to see is like you do the roll off and the winner picks whether it's into the dark or open and the loser picks the mission, maybe would be like a nice I like in between. I like that a lot actually, yeah. Like I, I think that would be fair, close yeah. to fair. Um so I don't know. You know, it's 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 a tough call, but because I mean, in that situation, maybe I'd rather play on open if it meant I get capture. You know, um, yeah. But I don't know. I mean, the, I think the board thing was really unfortunate. But you yeah. know, it's again, it's actually my fault because I picked attacker. <laughs> yeah. So obviously, um, or commandos wound up winning this tournament. So you were talking about how you know legionaries are. Commando's worst matchup, at least that's what all the um, Commando players were were telling you. So we have a few minutes left here uh, for this episode. Do we want to talk about Orcs a little bit? Or I should say the Commandos? Yeah, sure. Um, I mean, I can't, like going in, I thought that Orcs were the favorite. They're just like, with the way like people have been, have kind of like started to like figure out how to like abuse Sneaky Git on open board, and then plus they just got buffed. And I think other things getting like, you know, brought down a little bit, even though it was things they were good against already, like cult. Um, it's just kind of a perfect storm. Um, and I mean, so I mean, the sneaky thing, I think it needs to be addressed because for uh, playing legionary, the Nurgle legionary against it felt on open board, honestly, in both games that I played against that felt pretty unfair. Mm-hmm. So I can't imagine for the the teams that aren't like good until commandos how that that matchup must have felt like that must be horrible. Um, and I mean I think it's reflective of I believe when commandos had a they must have like a seventy or eighty percent win rate at Nova there was like 
10 commando players. So, yeah, I, I just ran through the list here. A third of the field at Nova was commandos players, so there were eight out of uh, eight out of 24 uh, players ran commandos. Oh, at like least from top. at least from what I can see. Well, there were 62 players in Nova. Oh, there were so... 62. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm an idiot. See, I, I only have it showing the first 24 results. Oh, so yeah, that there's... number is inaccurate. But um, um Yeah, <laughs> I mean, there was like a lot of commandos and they did really well. Like I think 6 out of those or 7 out of the 10 placed in the top 25. So I mean, that kind of Yeah, says there a lot. there were 8 in the top 24. Oh my god. Yeah, so yeah. A, a third of the of the top 24 players uh, were playing commandos. Yeah. and half the top eight was I was uh, commandos as well um and and honestly you know a lot of people were saying to me like oh like i think legionary is a really bad matchup for commandos and you know i i think it's relatively bad in terms of like commandos don't really have bad matchups i guess so it's probably their worst but i would be curious to see what the legionary win rate in commandos was at this tournament um not counting my games because my experience as a legionary player is that we make it hard for them, but it's still very hard. It's not easy at all. And I think you have to be very careful with how you play or else it can like really domino against you. Um, like, because I, I don't know, like the commando player sees me move up like my six Marines and then they try to kill me and they bounce off and then I kill their whole team. And it's like, it, it, I'm sure it looks <laughs> easier right. than, than it actually is. But th there's a lot of very careful positioning that goes into into making sure you can actually do that into a uh, into a good commando player. And I played quite a few good commando. I, I think every commando player I played at this tournament was extremely good. Um. So, yeah, I mean, I I think a good start would be sneaky. Get probably just shouldn't be happening more than once. Um, that's the kind of thing where I wonder if, like, in design. When they were making this, if they overlooked. even intended that, yeah, yeah, and the, but they like maybe they just decided to keep it because it didn't appear to be a problem before they had yeah. extra CP and stuff. Well, now now it is. <laughs> yeah, it's really it's really gross to play. Like, yeah, like I said at the beginning of this pod, I didn't even know you could do that. I thought you could only do it with one model because that's just how I had seen it done forever. And it's I, yeah, I like, never would have even thought. Yeah, like they'll do it three times because like, what are they going to spend their CP on? It's just you know just a scratch every turn which they'll get the cp for yeah and if they don't have to just a scratch turn one which a lot of the time which they, they don't, don't. Against, yeah um then on turn two they can use daca and they still get their just a scratch on turn two yeah and um yeah it's just like very oppressive and it was hard for legionnaires in my opinion and it was probably much harder for other teams so all right cool so um I'm all out of questions here for you, Shane. So unless there's anything else you want to say or anybody you want to give a shout out to, actually, before we get out of here, I do want to give, we definitely have to give a shout out to uh, Dakota Luster for what, oh, yeah. he, uh, what he gifted to you, right? Oh my goodness. Yeah. First of all, I was on the Squad Games podcast last week. So if you're listening to this and you didn't hear that, go check that out. Um, and yeah, Dakota gave me a, so those of you that are uh, familiar with Dakota's like token trays, he has these like sick magnetic token trays that he makes over at Luster's workshop um, that you can buy actually. And he made a custom command point one for me that has our logo on it. It's like a black and orange kind of look. And it says my name on the bottom left. It's a Shane, uh, the coolest thing. It was amazing. I played all my games on it. I, I love it. Um, super, super wonderful and amazing. I uh, cannot wait to use it more. <laughs> so shout out to Dakota. Uh, I, I took a picture of it and I put it on the Discord like on Thursday, like when I came in or on Friday before the team tournament. Um, super cool. But yeah, as far as other shout outs, I mean, shout out to Matt H. I stayed with him. He was the organizer. He ran this whole thing by himself, and he did an awesome job. Um, total MVP. Uh, I, w I would recommend you check out his tournaments if you live in the Virginia, like Maryland area, because uh, he does TO pretty regularly over there. Um, shout out to all my opponents. Uh, each and every one of you was an absolute pleasure. 
Um, and, uh, it was, it was honestly great. And, you know, all the people I met along the way throughout the weekend, um, and the, the, you know, fun times, it was, it was a blast. Thank you everybody for tuning in on YouTube and on your, uh, whatever podcasting app you are listening to us on. Uh, thank you so much. If you haven't already, make sure to follow us and subscribe to us and hit the bell icon and all of that fun stuff that you, that way you don't miss out on any future kill team content. I uh, also want to give a special thank you to all of our Patreon supporters and our YouTube channel members for helping to uh, support Command Point here and, uh, you know, enabling us to produce all of this Kill Team content for you guys. So thank you ever so much for that. Uh, hope to see you all again soon, and I'll see you all again in the next one. <laughs>